वेलकम बैक टू द क्लास टूडे विल बी कंटिन्यूंग फ्रॉम वेर वी लेफ्ट यस्टरडे वी आर डिस्कसिंग नॉन कम्युनिकेबल डिजीजेस एंड वी आर सींग टूडेज टॉपिक एज हाइपर टेंशन एज वी हैव ब्रीफली मैंशन यस्टरडे हाइपर टेंशन इज नॉट एब्सोल्यूटली डिफाइंड इन फैक्ट द लोअर वैल्यूज ऑफ ब्लड प्रेशर यू हैव द बेटर इट इज फॉर ऑल प्रैक्टिकल पर्पजेस वी नीड टू हैव एन ऑपरेशन डेफिनेशन ऑफ हाइपर टेंशन सो वी हैव फॉर्मुलेटेड ऑपरेशन डेफिनेशन ऑफ हाइपर टेंशन एज blood pressure which is less than 140 by 90 mm of hg but remember this is for therapeutic reasons ideally blood pressure can be as low as possible as long as the patient is not having any symptoms so that is basically what hypertension is and these readings that i have just told you are just for treatment purposes coming to the slide as you can see uh, you have risk factors for hypertension again risk factors for hypertension like risk factors for chd have been divided into modifiable and non modifiable risk factors non modifiable risk factors are almost the same they are age sex genetics and ethnicity and the modifiable risk factors are obesity salt intake saturated fat alcohol heart rate physical activity environmental stress lower socio economic status as well as oral contraception let us run down this list of risk factors one by one coming to the first non modifiable risk factor that is age this is no secret that all of us age and as we age the blood pressure also goes on rising so everybody knows that as you age the blood pressure is bound to rise blood pressure rises in both the sexes but there is a peculiar point here and the point to pay attention is that from adolescence the blood pressure of boys rises more as compared to girls this rise goes on and is more marked in adulthood by the time a female achieves menopause post menopausally this difference in the blood pressure narrows down and it may so happen that in the post menopausal time females over overtake males as far as the blood pressure is concerned so that is something you should know as far as age as a risk factor is concerned coming to sex again i told you the example of both age and sex compositely on the levels of blood pressure remember there is continual research going on on the benefits of estrogen therapy for hypertension also coming to the next non modifiable factor we have genetics the blood pressure values of monozygotic twins are more closely correlated as compared to the dizygotic twins in fact they are so close that this is what pushed us towards thinking that hypertension is a genetic disease obviously you will have a question in mind what are the genetic loci for hypertension and the answer is this is very difficult to determine hypertension essentially has been polygenic and in all foreseeable future will be polygenic after so many decades of research we are not able to pinpoint a specific loci for hypertension children of two normal tensive parents have only 3% chance of developing hypertension but if the parents are both hypertensive you can see that the child has a 45% chance of development of hypertension which is pretty high so all these factors tell us that hypertension has a very high genetic component ethnicity black americans have default rates of higher blood pressures as compared to the whites so this has been observed that the black population has more rates of hypertension obesity again obesity is highly correlated with blood pressure all of us know that obese people tend to have higher blood pressures and obesity has a direct as well as indirect effect on blood pressure one of the most commonly used factors for obesity is the waist to hip circumference ratio in layman's term this is called as central obesity so obesity that is concentrated on the waist as compared to the hips is called as central obesity how to remember this the trick to remember this is an abdomen which looks like this and legs which looks like this are not good but an abdomen which looks like this and hips which looks like this is aesthetic in the second case if you take the waist is to hip ratio this will be smaller and the ratio will be less than 1 so this is healthy if we take the ratio for this the ratio will be unhealthy 
so this is the basis to hip ratio a very simple index but a very effective one it directly correlates with presence of obesity as well as that of hypertension salt intake we already had discussed again we have higher salt intake as compared to the rest of the world the average salt intake in the indian diet is about 15 grams per day and we need to reduce that by a very large margin to less than 5 grams per day it is postulated that the patients of essential hypertension have a genetic anomaly by which the kidneys don't excrete sodium at least unless they have achieved a high blood pressure a miscellaneous point that can be asked here what are the other ions which reduce blood pressure and the other ions as you can see on your slide right now are potassium calcium cadmium and magnesium so these are side ions these can be asked along with salt because these are actually ions which help reduce blood pressure out of these you may use anything but please don't answer cadmium for use because that is not used it is a toxic substance then we come to the effect of saturated fat we all know that saturated fat increases obesity this is something to note that saturated fat also increases blood pressure monounsaturated fatty acids and polyunsaturated fatty acids reduce blood pressure as well and saturated fatty acids increase blood pressure fiber the role of fiber has been also increasingly debated in recent years and many here to unknown benefits of fibers are coming to notice fiber also helps in hypertension fiber retards the absorption of glucose as well as fats it forms micelles and traps these substances into the intestine and therefore it is beneficial for not only hypertension but also blood pressure as well as your lipid profile so in increasing role of fiber is being noticed you can expect occasion on fiber because this is something which has been recently developed coming to heart rate people with increased heart rate by default show hypertension why is it the postulate is that maybe people have an increased sympathetic tone these people with increased sympathetic tone have then by default a increased heart rate and therefore increased blood pressure so if you have a higher default sympathetic rate it automatically leads to hypertension and a higher beating heart rate stress as discussed stress is a very vague phenomenon unfortunately we do not have a scale for measuring stress but stress is implicated in many diseases and hypertension itself says hypertension so excess of stress so no doubt stress is an implicating factor in hypertension fortunately we have biological proof to support this now if you see catecholamine levels in the patients of hypertension are more as compared to those who are normotensive so this definitely serves as an indicator why does it serve as an indicator what happens when you when you are stressed when you are stressed there is release of the adrenergic system and therefore catecholamines are increased so this goes hand in hand with the theory that stress may lead to hypertension coming to the socio economic status this is a bit tricky in the western world the poor suffer from hypertension and in the developing worlds the rich suffer suffer from hypertension in the developing world also there are complications earlier what i said was true nowadays there is reversal even the poor are increasingly being suffering from hypertension so this is a really tricky question coming to the types of hypertension there are basically two types of hypertension primary hypertension and secondary hypertension as you know primary hypertension means hypertension which has got no cause and secondary hypertension means hypertension which has got a secondary or a causal factor so secondary hypertension basically has some other factor which is causing hypertension primary hypertension is the overwhelming hypertension that you know so if you understand hypertension if you know somebody who is hypertensive more often than not he is a case of primary hypertension in fact here i would like to add a note many a times we assume that people are primary hypertensive cases and never ever investigate a case of hypertension for secondary causes this might be a mistake if a patient comes to you and if you diagnose that the blood pressure of the patient is high rather than assuming that the case is of primary hypertension at least on the first contact you should try and derive other causes of hypertension so that if any of these diseases that you see on the screen right now are present 
they are diagnosed and they are treated the beauty of diagno diagnosing secondary hypertension is that secondary hypertension is treatable so this is one of those reasons of hypertension which you can actually treat if you treat the cause of secondary hypertension there will be no existence of the disease so this is a treatable cause of hypertension all the more reason for you to screen people for secondary hypertension the list that you see is not an exhaustive list these are some examples of secondary hypertension and they are chronic glomerulonephritis chronic pyelonephritis congenital uh, narrowing of the aorta pheochromocytoma and adrenal gland tumors so these are some of the reasons of secondary hypertension the second classification of hypertension is based upon the organ damage here we have three categories we have stage 1 stage 2 and stage 3 to really simplify this for you i have put names to it so stage 1 is you have no signs no symptoms no evidence of damage in stage 2 you have just the signs signs means something which the doctor sees so if the doctor sees presence of atherosclerosis in the body if he does a fundoscopy and sees a retinal hemorrhage if he does a urine microalbuminuria and detects albumin in the urine if he does some test damage is found that is stage 2 stage 3 patient comes with signs as well as symptoms so the examples i told you these are present plus the patient himself complains about the hypertension he may have myocardial infarction he may have angina he may have discomfort on exertion or he may have any of the other symptoms for hypertension so in stage 3 organ damage has progressed far you have signs and symptoms stage 2 only signs stage 0 no signs no symptoms organ damage is asymptomatic when systolic and diastolic blood pressure fall in different categories so coming to the measurement of blood pressure i know this is very basic but it is very frequently tested also this will also not be tested just in community medicine but also in physiology it may be asked in medicine how do you measure the blood pressure of a patient the ideal recommendation here is that the patient must be in a sitting position he should not be in a supine position who says that you can have a uniform policy at a clinic for measuring the blood pressure in either the right hand or the left hand what is a further refinement what can be recommended is that blood pressure could be taken on the left hand always and why is it it is because most of the population uses their right hand and therefore there is muscular hypertrophy which may lead to a false decreased reading of blood pressure in the left hand since there is not such muscle hypertrophy the blood pressure values would be more to more closer to the real values another precaution that you should take is the bulb of the sigma manometer should be at the level of the heart it must not be above or it must not be below so when you make the patient sit on a chair make sure that the height of the table is at the level of the heart this is another precaution that you should take you took the blood pressure readings take it very very carefully you know that systolic is recorded when the sound starts and diastolic is recorded when the sound disappears sometimes muffling is recommended for this for taking the diastolic blood pressure but universally it is accepted that disappearance of the sound is a better indicator so that should be used to avoid further confusions so when the sound starts that is systolic when the sound disappears that is diastolic what happens if these values the systolic and the diastolic are at different levels of classification in that case the higher value should be used for the measurement of blood pressure and for classification the next entity is isolated systolic hypertension and it is defined as a systolic blood pressure above 140 mm of hg and a diastolic of less than 90 mm of hg so this there is a discrepancy the systolic is above but the diastolic is below so there is a discrepancy and therefore this is called as isolated systolic systolic alone is more diastolic is okay coming to the magnitude of the problem in hypertension you really do not need to actually remember the burden of the disease in terms of the numbers but you need to have an understanding of what is the issue in the society 
as far as hypertension is concerned the most likely asked question the most frequently asked question is that of the rule of halves the rule of halves is right now on your screens and you can see a diagram here there are multiple circles here there is a big circle inside the big circle there is a small circle and you can see consecutively that the diameter of the circles is decreasing so say the biggest circle circle number 1 is the normotensive population out of these these are the people who have hypertension out of these 50% of these people this circle is the circle which knows that they have hypertension that means they are under some treatment out of these only the inner circle is the one which is getting adequate treatment so you can see that this is a typical iceberg disease most of the people do not know that they have hypertension if they know that they are they are having hypertension they are not under treatment the people who are under treatment are not getting adequate treatment so this is a classical iceberg disease most of the case load is hidden only a minority is exposed and a very minority is being adequately treated so this is also a very favorite question that can be asked with hypertension remember it is called as the rule of halves another sub topic here tracking of blood pressure blood pressure unlike many other biological variables can be followed through time so this is again a tool in the hand of the epidemiologist which he can use blood pressure can be followed over time and we can have a prognostic use of this so what exactly is tracking of blood pressure as you can see on the slides before you this is a crude diagram of what is been shown on the slides if a child has blood pressure which is low in all likelihood he would carry on in this low trajectory and when he is an adult he is most likely to have a normal blood pressure or a blood pressure which is even below normal but for people who have increased blood pressure in childhood the chances of getting hypertension rise proportionally so here you can you can have that this is taking off now the child had high blood pressure as compared to other kids in childhood and he is very much more likely to develop hypertension as he grows up this does not happen with children who have low blood pressure or normal blood pressure values in the childhood what is the importance of this i get my i get my hrg okay so my work is sorted out i know my high risk group i know the children for which i should look out for i know the children whom i should follow so these these group these children are the children who should be followed up because these are the people who are prone to develop hypertension later in life the people who are at the lower rank here i really need, need not bother about them because they are very unlikely to develop hypertension in adult life so my work is sorted i got my hrg that is the beauty of tracking of blood pressure errors in bp measurement we had seen this with other errors also but measurement of blood pressure is a classical examples of many errors because there can be a number of errors in this first is observer error hearing acuity classification of the sounds interpretation of the sounds varies from person to person and that can be a big problem if three or four people take blood pressure everybody's value will be different so this is observer variation 